I left Montana and my marriage one week ago today. The days leading up to my departure may have been the most tortured I felt in my entire life, but I did it. I left. I managed to make it about three hours down the road before stopping for the night and beginning to sort out all of my belongings I had haphazardly stashed in every nook and cranny in the final hours of packing. I fell asleep, exhausted, and woke up a few hours later, noticing that my entire body was sore, which was a strange sensation after feeling literally nothing in my body for the past month, so I figured maybe that was a good thing. As I laid in the darkness, I decided to call in the energy of the spirit of Utah, my first destination, to see what messages she had for me. Immediately, three honeybees, flying in formation, took me to the Wasatch Mountain Range, just outside of Ogden on the north end of the state. Ogden is where my paternal grandmother's family immigrated to with the Mormon faith in the 1800s, and where many generations of them are buried. I have shared extensively about my journey with these ancestors on my podcast, The Earth Keepers, and will link to it in the description if you'd like to hear more. But on this morning, which just so happened to be November 11th, 1111, and the first day of my completely new life, the honeybees took me to the mountains where the land welcomed me back. I saw it rise up to greet me and embrace me, merge with me, like a lover returning after a long absence. One of my many true loves, the land in Utah and the Wasatch Mountains. I haven't just known these mountains in this lifetime. I've known them intimately across time and space. Their every outline is traced on my soul. Echoes of another life still somehow present inside of me. And so Although I had no intention of doing any ancestral or energy work on this visit to Ogden, I was simply planning to reconnect with a friend and take a much-needed rest after the shock of the past month. I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised when I received a message to the contrary. I was asked to visit the cemetery where I myself was once buried in this land, near these mountains, in 1953. Now, if this seems confusing, it's because it kind of is. You see, last year, as I was working on the podcast series about my ancestral connection to this place, I was shown that I had more than ancestors in Utah. I'd had a past life here. And not just any past life, but a past life in my own lineage. One of my great-great-grandmother's brothers, Dan, was another fractal of my own soul. Our different soul pieces had agreed to incarnate in a way that we could work together on similar issues across more than one lifetime. Which makes sense, really. While our human lives feel long to us, they're really just the tiniest sliver of time. We don't need to accomplish every piece of soul business in 80-ish years of a single lifetime here on Earth. Our soul can be incarnated in many places and times to learn and grow simultaneously and send that information back and forth to each other through our higher self. So in the very early morning hours of 1111, that piece of my soul that did know the high desert of Utah as a long lost love reached back out to me one more time and asked me to come visit. To close the loop, he said. After all of the personal and ancestral healing work of the past four years, it was time to close this chapter on that lifetime. And in doing so, I would invite this piece of my soul back to me, not only to be integrated into my current lifetime, but also to receive Dan's wisdom in my life as a healed and healthy ancestor, a support to me on the path I'm now beginning to walk. He wanted to step in to provide the comfort to me that I've provided to him these past few years. That day in the cemetery was really remarkable and really special and I'm really glad that I received that message to go and visit even though I really felt like I was done with it. It really was the last piece that I needed to kind of integrate into my own soul. And it was kind of funny, you know, Katrina and I went to the cemetery and um, we've been to a few cemeteries before in the Ogden area every time I go there. 
we've visited other family members at other cemeteries, but this was one we hadn't been to, and it was very large, and we thought for sure there would be a directory, and there wasn't. And so uh, each time we have gone to a cemetery like this, we just uh, tune in and ask Spirit, where do we start? And so we kind of drove around and both had a feeling to go in the same direction, in the same location. And, uh, you know, she parked the car and we got out. And as she was kind of walking in that direction, I stopped and closed my eyes and just thought, what's the view? What is the view from his grave? And as soon as I opened my eyes and saw the mountains in front of me, there was a very remarkable mountain peak with a big tree in front of it. And I just knew that was the spot. And literally we walked, you know, five feet and she said, here it is. <laughs> it was right there in front of us. So he led us right to it in this huge cemetery, which was really helpful. But uh, once I had time to kind of sit down and tune in and just ask for any messages, his energy just came through really strongly to me and just was so thankful and had so much gratitude for, uh, you know, his timeline, his lifetime, his family, of course, is all also my lifetime, my family as well. Uh, but just really uh, sharing with me that he's at peace, his family is at peace, and that I can be at peace with this as well. And that moving forward, uh, we can be together as one, we can be integrated. The lessons and the knowledge and whatever is needed is now a part of me and we can move on together. But what was really fascinating and unexpected for me, you know, <laughs> it's funny, you would think that I would realize all of these things are, are interconnected, but I was really seeing them as, as separate things, you know, this, this journey that I'm on, the transition that's happening in my life, and closing this chapter and doing this ancestral healing work with this other part of me. But that was really the message that he wanted to share with me in that moment, that the clearing of that old toxic energy in that lifetime and on that level had to be undone in this lifetime and on this level as well. And that my field had shifted in such a way that it could no longer hold a lot of that energy that I wasn't even aware that I was carrying from that lifetime. And so really, I've had a huge clearing to release a lot of that toxic energy out of my life. And ultimately, he said, it's no longer my burden to carry or my burden to experience. I've done the work. I've released it. It doesn't need to stay with me anymore. Finally, he said, it's been undone on all timelines. So it really is remarkable when we do this ancestral work, how many people, how many lives it can touch, how it can touch things in what we perceive to be the past, but really is just another timeline, and how it vibrates and reverberates forward into our lives and the other people in our family's lives as well. So again, I just, I have so much gratitude for my ancestors for guiding me and leading me through this experience. I could never have imagined <laughs> when it began that this was where it would take me and where it would go. Uh, but I really do feel free on that level and that so many of the patterns that I was carrying, pain from lifetimes that I don't even remember experiencing, you know, it's just, it's, it's been undone and it's been released. Something big shifted in that moment when we were together in the cemetery last weekend, standing in the shadow of the Wasatch Mountain Range. I really am being freed from the confines of the past painful and messy as that may presently be in my life. Last week, I shared with you that it felt like I was setting out on the archetypal hero's journey, only just being initiated onto the path after initially refusing the call for this adventure. But I realized that the very next step in the journey involves meeting a mentor who offers knowledge, skills, and training that will be necessary if the hero is to overcome the challenges that lie ahead of them. Think Morpheus in The Matrix or Dumbledore in Harry Potter. The mentor's role is usually a fateful one. They cannot come along for the journey. The hero has to go it alone without the safety net of their mentor. But even without the mentor's physical presence, in many stories, they find a way to continue to provide guidance from a great distance, often from the other side of the veil as Dan is now doing for me. So, while I thought that leaving my home in Montana was crossing the threshold onto the journey, 
It seems that my departure from Utah to cross the Wasatch Mountains in the opposite direction that my ancestors once did was the true beginning to this story. Of course, time is not linear, and I have no doubt that this journey will be circular in nature as well, bringing me back to places I've already been, but with a new and different vision than the last time around. My first stop on the other side of the mountains was a harmonic egg in Kemmerer, Wyoming, where I was held in the soft, loving embrace of all of my trusted allies and ancestors, Dan included. As the door closed and I settled into the womb-like egg, I fell into a deep sleep as my guides began the very first steps to stitching the pieces of my broken heart back together again. In this lifetime, and many others, I have no doubt.